Good afternoon. Um, thank you for attending this talk. Um, although there's medium attendance in this talk, I was expecting a little low attendance. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a very specific talk, and that's why uh, I think it, it's a very good attendance for me. So let me introduce myself. My name is Ricardo. I'm senior software engineer working for the office of the CTO in a group called the Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellence. And I'm working on the Open Data Hub project, responsible mainly for all um, research about data engineering tools. And that makes a uh, room for a disclaimer. So this is more a data engineering and analytics talk than a data science, so you are warned about. Um, let's talk about the agenda. I'm going to talk um, and show some demos about the Jupyter Hub and Apache Zeppelin. And after you see how both tools work, I'll try to find uh, uh, the matrix uh, about the, the feature matrix about them, try to compare uh, both tools, and then we're going to the conclusion. All right, so you might imagine why the, the talk title is that, but yeah, I was inspired mainly by this picture, so I think it would be a, a good picture that uh, summarize the, the title. Uh, so maybe you guys are expecting that I'm going to make those tools fight and see who's the winner. Let's see then who's the winner. All right, so no more talk. Let's go to, to the tools. Let's talk first about Jupyter Hub. I think everyone knows about Jupyter Hub because it's widespread across the community all data scientists use. So um, just some bullets about Jupyter Hub. So Jupyter Hub is a web-based notebook and you can use as a computational platform where you can create live coding, equations, text, visualizations, dashboards, and any other media. Um, of course, it depends on the, the language that it supports. Uh, I'm talking about a specific engine called the kernel inside the Jupyter Hub. And well, uh, there are many kernels for Jupyter Hub. It depends that you need to configure uh, to use those kernels. So uh, yeah, this is uh, a very useful tool. The community is huge and there are tons of examples in the community. So let's see how it works. Um, Jupyter Hub, it's, uh, it's a Python library, so all you need to do is just use Conda or PIP to install it. I think I have it. So Jupyter Notebook. Well, running this command, you have the Jupyter Notebook running. But there's uh, an alternative command for that, which is the Jupyter Lab. I'm going to run it to show both interfaces. I don't need that because I already have the notebook. Just give me time to resize. So can you almost see the 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 font? It's better. Okay. So. That's the interface for the Jupyter Notebook, which is different than the Jupyter Lab. So there are uh, slight differences between them. Jupyter Notebooks a very simple server where you can run your notebooks. But if you want something that could be used for multiple users, multiple kernels, Jupyter Lab is another option. But they are kind of the same, okay? So I created a very simple uh, notebook integrated with Spark, uh, actually PySpark. And 
I have a very simple data set, so uh, let me run some of the commands inside the Jupyter Hub. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, I'm putting some environment variables inside this block to make uh, PySpark to download some special packages. Uh, in this case, I'm talking about uh, getting some S3 and Amazon AWS dependencies to uh, get a data set inside the S3 bucket, okay? So creating the Spark session, configuring the S3, and then let's go to the S3 bucket, get the file. It will take some time because it will need to install the packages. Oh, it's already there. Okay, some tweaks I needed to do for the data set, and then that's the part where I'm going to handle with the data. So uh, all I did is create uh, a Spark connection and get a data set over a S3 bucket, and then I converted that to a pandas data frame in this block indicated by the four number. And now I'll show some of the visualizations I can do with that. All right, so it's a pie chart. So I'm going to use that and this is going to return an error and I'm going to say why. At last, this is a, a bar graph, all right, using two levels of grouping. So this is very simple uh, code, but there are some things that I, I like to point out in this notebook is that, well, uh, I needed to write some code that I, I don't need to, I don't need to know about it because if I'm expecting to just uh, run some data analysis, uh, all this code from the block one to four, one to three, I think it's better, should be unnecessary for me, right? Uh, my job is to analyze data. I don't need to know the details about where the Spark is, where the data set is, uh, or even how to create this Spark connection, all right? So this is one of the things that uh, makes me a, a bit annoyed to use uh, Jupyter. And there's this other thing about the second visualization. So what I was doing here, uh, I was trying to create a, a bar plot by grouping uh, all the estimated cost feature in my uh, data set, group it by trip region, okay? So this data set is basically about uh, getting some sales, uh, um, opportunities that I had and how many days I need to spend, how is the estimated cost and what is the region I'm going to, to, to do that service. So the problem is that uh, when I created this data frame with pandas uh, that, came, that came from uh, a data set inside the S3 bucket, it created using generic types and that made all the data set to use only strings. So this is easy to check by the types. So as you can see, everything is in the same type. So what happened here? It didn't try to guess the type of data in my data frame in order to use some special fields like numbers to make some uh, summarizations like the sum I was using is the, in this visualization here. Okay, the sum, all right? Anyway, I could do it easily. It's just a simple command opening just like a Google Doc special that can run Python code and then I could 
generate some visualizations using some data frame that start anywhere. All right? Cool. So, so that's Jupyter Hub. There are other features uh, in Jupyter Hub, uh, and also Jupyter Lab that can make this uh, this experience better, like creating multiple users to store this um, these notebooks, like um, putting some logging mechanism, authentication, authorization, and so on. But let's just focus on the notebook itself. Okay, so moving to Apache Zeppelin. So what is Apache Zeppelin? Uh, this project is fairly new compared to Jupyter Hub, and it belongs to the Apache Software Foundation and it's still an incubating project. So what is the, the main uh, features about Zeppelin? So uh, it has the same um, intention as the Jupyter Hub to create notebooks where you can use uh, text, uh, interactive data visualization, and equations, and everything else, okay? Um, However, uh, they have more um, good data visualization tools, and it's fairly native, and as well as there are multiple uh, language backend involved, so you can use multiple languages as well, like Jupyter Hub, but there's uh, a little difference in Zeppelin compared to Jupyter Hub. In the same notebook, you can use as many languages you want, different than the Jupyter Hub, because you create a specific kernel only for one language. So if you're creating an R, lang uh, an R kernel in your notebook, it's only R you can use inside your notebook. Zeppelin is different. You, in each block, you can use specific uh, kernels. In this case, uh, Zeppelin used the concept of interpreters. All right? You can share your notebooks, your, your blocks. You can deployment as a single, as a multiple user, and things that JupyterHub also can do it. All right? So let's go to Jupyter. Well, Ju uh, Jupyter, sorry, uh, Zeppelin. So Zeppelin is a bit different. Uh, it has a whole distribution where you can download, uh, you must uncompress and run the binaries from here. Uh, it's based on Java, so you need a JVM in this case. I think for many of, of you, it's already an disadvantage uh, of Zeppelin uh, compared to Jupyter Hub. Well, Anyways, let's see what Zeppelin can do. Okay, it's already starting. So, oh. Now let's go to the dashboard. So, this is Zeppelin dashboard. It's all some different things here. So, like this is the part where you can uh, manage your notebooks, and as you can see, there's this anonymous login. So for the default distribution of Zeppelin, you can log in as an anonymous user, but you can put some uh, authentication back in, like LDAP or other things. And as well, you can uh, define a remote location to store your notebooks, like an S3, uh, a Git backend, Azure, or even a MongoDB uh, backend. So, as well as Jupyter, I created the same notebook with the same visualizations, but can you see the difference in this notebook? How many lines do I need to 
load my CSV file and create the visualizations. So it's even uh, clearer, right? And maybe it's not, okay, now it's better. And maybe you notice that there's this percent sign uh, specifying the kind of kernel I'm using. Uh, it's Spark by Spark, and right below this block, I'm using SQL. So, what's the difference? Uh, I'm using different backends in the same notebook, right? But in this case, this block, uh, the SQL block, depends on the above. So, let me run this block. It's reading the CSV file and using Spark SQL features is going to create a, a table called sample data. Okay, it's already created. So every SQL block I have, I can just run a SQL and it will generate this interactive with data visualization. And in this case I can make some changes like if I want just a simple table or a pie chart, area chart, line, scatter, or whatever you want. You already have the legend. So, so far so good. Okay, you can download this data as a CSV if you want, or TSV. Okay, so, like Jupyter, I have the same SQL statement to generate the other visualization as a bar plot. Let's see what happens in here. Oh, so, Zeppelin could create, right? Because he's using some uh, specific uh, blocks in PySpark that could generate this table and can guess the the metadata inside, and all the columns that should be treated as a number, he could detect, and because of that, I can create this visualization. So it's a bit different in this case. And the other one, okay, the same, the same bar plot I had in the other one, but without doing anything, I could make two uh, levels of grouping, and I could have a better visualization generated in this Zeppelin notebook than the Jupyter one, right? Okay, what else? So, for each block, you can get a, the link only for this paragraph. So, if you want to share this paragraph to some kind of report or whatever you want, you can get this specific link and just import into your HTML code and you can have this, uh, this same visualization in, in, an, in an interactive way, right? Okay, I think that's all, at least for the Zeppelin, all right? Okay, so just to make things better, uh, JupyterHub and Zeppelin treat some concepts differently. So in JupyterHub, when I talk about the kernel in Zeppelin, they call the interpreter, right? And in JupyterHub, the block, uh, it, the block is that piece where you put the code and run Independ uh, separately from the others, okay? In Zeppelin is a paragraph. Uh, in JupyterHub, there's the notebook. Well, you can call in Zeppelin dashboards. Oh, there's one thing I, I was forgetting about the Zeppelin. So, this is one important thing. I'm running PySpark code, right? So where's the code to create this connection? 
right? Good question. Where it is? So that's one of the things that uh, it makes, in my opinion, Zeppelin a little better than uh, Jupyter in terms of user experience. Like, all I need to do is to go to the interpreter configuration. So just click on the, uh, the username and go to the interpreter. And there it is. Uh, here. That's the last one, Spark. So the interpreter, it's just like a kernel with Jupyter Hub, but the difference is uh, when you create an interpreter in Jupyter Hub, in Zeppelin, uh, I'm going to get used with the terms and not make confusions. Uh, all right. So Zeppelin and Spark interpreter, all right. So uh, when you create interpreter in Zeppelin, it will create all the objects you need to use that uh, technology. So it can be Spark, it can be Cassandra, Elasticsearch. So all you need to do is put the configuration in this interpreter the configuration page. And then when you just specify what kind of paragraph you are using, and in this case, you can use all of these, uh, um, like headers, well, we can put that way. So you can use Spark, Spark SQL, Spark Dev, Spark PySpark, and Spark R. Uh, when you use uh, this header in your paragraph and you run this paragraph, it will instantiate this interpreter and uh, create those objects for you. So either the Spark or either the Spark context objects, all right? You can be used globally in shared process. You can set permissions to it. And in this case, I'm creating a local master, but it can be used uh, a remote master, all right? OK, so with that, there's one other cool thing you can do it is uh, when you ran the, the paragraph, you can go to this uh, interpreter page and you can go to the local Spark. So now you can look at all the, the code I ran inside this notebook by the Spark dashboard. All right, maybe these are the sequels I ran. Yeah, so there it is. Okay, so this for me is one of the features that make Zeppelin uh, the best in this case. Like, uh, I don't need to care about uh, what is the, the location of the, the backend I'm going to use, either Cassandra or in this case, Spark, yeah, I don't need to know. Uh, I just need to know that there's an object with uh, uh, a running connection for me, and I can use it to run all my notebook, right? Uh, just one simple, a quick thing. You can also monitor all the Spark jobs in here, all right? Okay, so given all this comparison, uh, maybe you're already uh, asking yourself or maybe uh, expecting me that I'm going to give the trophy to the winner. Well, I'm going to say who's the winner. I mean, the winner is you, 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 everyone. The users are the winners because we have two very good tools to do the same thing. But that's one of the things that my, my expectation of the a possible scenario to it. So as I said in, in the beginning of this talk, uh, Jupyter Hub is perfect for data scientists because it's simple, right? It has a strong community. There are lots of examples uh, about 
You can do anything in Jupyter Hub, and you can Google it. You will find a ready example to use that technology, right? As for Zeppelin, well, as I said, Zeppelin is an incubating project, so it's still uh, in that part of make the code mature, but it has, uh, I see a good, uh, I see Zeppelin with good eyes. And, uh, there are many things, many cool things you can do in Zeppelin, right? So my expectation is that Zeppelin could be good for data analytics, right? And the few examples that Zeppelin has, you can see that when you go to the Zeppelin page, you already have a folder called Zeppelin Tutorial with some good examples to it and using other technologies. So the few examples we have in Zeppelin, it's already useful for anyone, right? I mean, maybe Spark could be uh, the majority of the, the examples we need to we need to know, so uh, we already covered by that, right? So that's what I think. Both tools can live co together in, this, uh, in a business environment. Why? Because one is good for quick data exploration, and the other one can create powerful data analytics and even interactive. I mean, there's something that I didn't show you in Zeppelin which can be useful, like for example, as well as Jupyter, there's a markdown uh, interpreter, and with that you can do something like hello, and put some special character here, saying that this could be parameterized, and when I run this paragraph, look what happened. It creates a form for me. So I can write everything here, like hello devconf. It's easy. If I hit enter, it's there. The value is there. So uh, not only with Markdown, we can do that. You can do either with uh, SQL, the SQL uh, paragraphs can be also uh, interactive by using these forms. You can, well, there are many things to, to talk about Zeppelin and Jupyter. So, um, so that's the part where I say, this is um, basically all my, my knowledge about these tools and I think they are great and I think they are both for specific scenarios and they can live together in the same team, like Dr. Hub for data scientists and Zeppelin for data analytics, right? So these are the references I, I used, of course, the, the, those two project websites. And this particular one, stackshare.io, uh, it's a community website where people can uh, create some tools comparisons and the community goes there and creates some uh, bullet points about what the uh, one tool have as a feature, what the other tool has, and so on. And it kind of create a, a good dashboard to compare both tools. So it's not Jupyter versus Zeppelin, there are many other ones. Uh, so I think this might be a useful link for you. I'll wait for people to write now. All right. Okay. So, as I was saying, I'm part of the Open Data Hub project team, which creates uh, all AI workloads for OpenShift and Kubernetes uh, environments. So, what are the uh, what, what's the status of these tools to be integrated with Open Data Hub? So first, Jupyter Hub, as 
it's a very wide user tool for the community. It's already there. So just go to opendatahub.io. You will find the Jupyter Hub uh, deployments in there as part of many other deployments. We have things for data engineering. We have uh, things to deploy models, uh, monitoring, and so on. As for Zeppelin, uh, there's a work in progress uh, repository uh, to create a image to run Zeppelin on, on containers. And soon, uh, we're going to create a, an operator for it to, in order to deploy on Kubernetes and OpenShift instance, all right? Well, I know it seems boring. Uh, ooh, the whole talk seems, you know, uh, I'm, all I'm trying to, to do with this talk is make this comparison and show up one good, powerful alternative to, to use for data analytics or even to run your own notebooks I mean, I like Jupyter as well as like Zeppelin, uh, and that's why I think both should have the same visibility in the community, right? So I think that's it. If you have any questions. I think there's one. Right, so I'll repeat the question and you'll tell me if it's right, okay? So the question is if uh, using a Python paragraph and an R paragraph, if I can share uh, the same variables between them, right? Yes, you can, because there is uh, a special paragraph where you can uh, inject this uh, object inside internal Zeppelin uh, interpreter and you can share these variables across any other uh, paragraphs, no matter if it's Python or R. Uh, it's a bit complex to do that, but I, I don't think it, it uh, I don't think they will, uh, they will keep the, this complexity uh, so long. I think they will find another way to do this easily. But as for example, we're using SQL and by Spark in this case. So I just created a table and the table was available for the other three uh, SQL paragraphs. So uh, in this case, it was just native, but for the other languages like Python and R, you need to manually inject those var variables. Okay. Right, okay. The question, if I understand this, is there uh, situations where Jupyter Hub is not a good use case, but Zeppelin is? Is that? Uh, oh, if I switch from one object to another, what are common mistakes I will make? Okay, so it's more about notebook migrations between yeah. Jupyter and Zeppelin, yeah. I don't think they have any kind of compatibility and I don't think they are working on that because uh, they have different formats, you know. Uh, although you can, if I remember, you can export both as a JSON format, but the fields are not the same. So it's not uh, so uh, compatible between them. So. Yeah, if you're going to create your Jupyter in your your notebook on Jupyter Hub, and if you're going to go to use Zeppelin, you need to create another notebook. There's no compatibility between them. Using 
Right. So the question is, uh, if Zeppeli has any production-ready applications? Yes, it is. Cloudera uses Zeppeli. So uh, in order to make some analytics things, Cloudera uh, gives the Zeppelin interface to create these uh, dashboards. Right? Okay, so the question is uh, the performance difference between Zeppelin and Jupyter. Well, okay, I can I can be in a bad mood in here, but uh, um, let's not forget that Jupyter Hub is a Python library and Zeppelin runs on Java, <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of the things to consider, but. Uh, well, I I can tell for sure, but I heard that in Open Data Hub we use, we try to use Jupyter Lab, but the problem is that it's CPU intensive application. So we decided to use just Jupyter notebooks using uh, a special spawner called the Cube Spawner. So when you log in to uh, OpenShift. It gives you a button to deploy your own and dedicated notebook server, like using the Jupyter Hub uh, space notebook, but using special parameters like configuring uh, S3 credentials, um, other environment variables, and so on. So, yeah, it's not a fair comparison, but you know, uh, let's not forget that. Uh, they have different, uh, they, they, they are implemented in different technologies, so you, you have pros and cons in each of them. There are two more questions. Mm -hmm. um, so you brought this example of um, sharing this widget from uh, Right. So the question. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if I understand the question, is uh, about the collaboration features between both uh, tools, uh, and yeah, I owe you that uh, because I just show how to collaborate to share paragraphs in Zeppelin, but I did not show anything in Jupyter Hub. Yes, there are collaboration tools, uh, things like sharing notebooks with Jupyter Hub, but in this part, I'm not so experienced with Jupyter Hub. Um, in this case, I'm more experienced with Zeppelin with uh, regarding creating uh, Collaboration, uh, collaboration reports. I was trying to show something here, but since I'm using a local host and there are some specific things to do, I try to create some uh, fake reports, and then all I did, all I did is put the, the paragraph links in an iframe inside this HTML. So just because it's local host, I can. Uh, and it's a very default distribution. Uh, I didn't have time to show, uh, to configure well the Zeppelin, but a well-configured Zeppelin server can give you a bookmarkable uh, URL of your uh, paragraph that generates some kind of visualization and you can embed in any HTML file, right? Uh, 
Right. So the question is the intention I did for each notebook is that is that is like creating data and uh, what I'm going to do with the, the this data inside this in, inside each notebook, right? <coughs> right. Uh, yeah. So the intention is just to show up. Uh, a very uh, simple uh, use case to get the data and make some quick exploration and create some uh, simple visualizations in them. But uh, I put Spark in the, in the role because uh, think about, I'm talking about a very simple data set that has not mo no more than one megabytes, but think about you are handling with gigabytes, terabytes of data. How do you handle this in such notebooks? Well, um, in this case, I added Spark in, the, in, the, in this role because it can help you to uh, handle large amounts of data. But uh, in Jupyter, you need to know how to configure Spark to get the best of the, the tool, to handle this data and not giving uh, headaches, you know? Because think about handling gigabytes of data in a notebook. Uh, you are using Spark, but Spark needs some fine tuning to handle all this data. So think about Zeppelin. I don't need to know how to configure it. I get, I, I make the assumption that someone created, deployed Zeppelin, and created the, uh, the best interpreter configuration in Spark in order to, if I request any kind of data set, no matter if it's megabytes, gigabytes, or terabytes, it's well configured to do whatever I want in my analysis. So this is one of the biggest difference I see between Jupyter Hub and Zeppelin. So it's the the development experience, right? Uh, I need to. I need few lines to do something that I could create more lines in Jupyter Hub, and I need to know more about technologies in Jupyter Hub than I need to know in Zeppelin, right? Does it make sense? Right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.